This video is designed to uh, demonstrate how to use SPSS to conduct a factorial analysis of variance. And uh, the example that we're going to use is the statistics anxiety study that we've talked about in class. Um, we have three variables, anxiety, which is our dependent variable, course experience, uh, no prior statistics course uh, as compared to having taken a prior, having taken a statistics course before, and then the type of instructional method, lectures only, lectures and video, and lectures, video, and collaboration. The data setup looks like this. And you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six cells. And each cell has a mean. So this is, uh, these are the three cells for the prior statistics course by lecture only, lecture, video, lecture and videos, and lecture videos in collaboration. And for the no prior uh, statistics course taken, these are the three cells by each of the instructional methods. And this is what the data looks like then set up in SPSS. So we have three research questions that we could ask. Does uh, ang statistical anxiety differ by whether a student has taken a previous statistics course or not? And um, do instructional methods make a difference? And then the third uh, research question we might pose is, is there an interaction effect between course experience and the type of instructional method that a student is exposed to? In setting up the data, we can go to variable view and notice that uh, if we click in values, you can see how I've labeled each one of these. So if I click on this, then I can type in one here and no prior course experience, and then two here and prior course experience. But I'm going to leave those alone for right now. And then I've done the same thing with the instructional methods. The key is, however, to make sure each of the data points is matched with each person by their level of course experience and the instructional method that they're uh, exposed to. So to do this analysis, we'll go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and Univariate. And I'm going to put uh, anxiety in the dependent variable box and then course experience in the fixed factors uh, box and instructional methods in the fixed factors box. Then uh, for plots, uh, I'm going to put course experience, no, co no prior statistics course, and uh, a prior statistics course on separate lines. And then I'll put instructional methods on the horizontal axis. And then I'm going to add that and then cancel or continue. I'm sorry. That way we get a nice uh, plot of how uh, differences between those who have taken a statistics course and those who have not look in comparison to the type of instructional method they're exposed to. Now for post hoc, all I'm going to do is move instructional method over because as you'll recall from our ANOVA um, example that uh, SPSS will only do a post hoc test if there's three or more levels or groups within a factor because if we only have two levels or two groups then all we, if the uh, result is significant. We just need to look at the means, and the higher mean, of course, as compared to the lower mean, then indicates a, a significant difference if the result is significant um, in the SPSS result. And then I'm going to click on Continue. And then 
I'm going to go to options and the only uh, overall mean that I want to uh, get here is this because this overall mean will give us the grand mean across all groups. So it'll give us the grand statistics anxiety mean. The means here we can get from our descriptive statistics. So I'm going to click on descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, observed power, and homogeneity tests because in addition to looking at uh, if our data is non-normal or the normality of our data, we also want to evaluate if the group variances are similar. They don't have to be exact, but they do have to be similar in order to meet the assumptions of the ANOVA analysis. And then I'm going to go continue and then OK. So now you can see the output. One of the first things you want to check is to make sure that you have the correct number of individuals in each group. So we have a total of 30 individuals. We have 15 who've uh, had no prior course and 15 who've had a prior course. And then within those groups, we have 10 that are exposed to lecture only, 10 in the lecture video group, and 10 in the lecture video and collaboration groups. And then this section of the report shows us the mean and the standard deviations for each of our combinations. By the way, this is called a 2 by 3 factorial ANOVA because we have two levels of course experience and we have three levels of instructional methods. So the total mean across the three instructional methods for no course, prior course experience, is 14. The total mean across the three instructional periods for uh, those who've had a prior course is 12. Then the total means for the instructional groups, regardless of um, course experience, are found here. And this total mean across all groups is the grand mean, 13. Our next piece of the analysis that we want to look at is the Levine's test. And the Levine's test tells us if our groups uh, depart from uh, homogeneity of variances significantly. And we can see that because this value is above 0.05, we do not have a problem with um, variances that are significantly different from one another among groups. Again, this value, since it's above 0.05, is not significant, and that indicates that we do meet the assumption of homogeneity of variances. This next uh, table is the test of between subjects. And there's a lot of information here, but there's certain information that we really need to pay attention to. So we have two factors here. We have the course experience factor and the instructional methods factor. Course experience factor, no prior course as compared to taking a prior course. The instructional methods factor consists of lectures, lectures and video, lectures, videos, and collaboration levels. Then we also have an interaction effect that we need to look at. So do uh, students who have taken a course as compared to those who have not taken a course in statistics, do they lift, differ at one level of the instructional methods? So do they differ at lectures but not at the other two? Or do they differ at lectures and videos and not at the other two levels of instructional methods. That's one thing we need to uh, determine. Then we have our error, and this is the variability in statistical anxiety that's not explained by group differences uh, in terms of course experience or group differences in terms of um, instructional methods or differences that occur 
uh, in the interaction. And then uh, we're not going to look at this total, but we're going to look at the corrected total. And if you refer to your uh, calculations in the example that I handed out, you will see that uh, these uh, sums of square, these variabilities in the factors match what our calculations show in the um, in the in the uh, example that I passed out, as well as the degrees of freedom, the mean squares. The mean squares are obtained by dividing the number of degrees of freedom into the sum of squares. So 1 into 30 is 30, 2 into 95 is 47, 2 into 5 is 2.5, and then the error 24 into 120 is 5. And then our F ratios are um, determined by dividing the uh, error into the factor mean square. So 5 into 30 is 6, 5 into 47 is 9.5, 5 into 2.5 is 0.5. And then our significant levels tell us if our factors are significant. So we can see that this value, because it's below 0.05, is significant. So students who have no prior statistics experience versus those who have prior statistics course experience differ significantly on mean statistical anxiety scores. We can also see that um, there is a difference across instructional methods in terms of mean statistical anxiety scores. However, we don't know which groups differ because there's three levels and we have to rely on the post-hoc test. In this case, uh, the course, course experience by instructional methods uh, factor is not significant because this value is above 0 0.05. These are our partial eta square values. So this is the percentage of variability in statistics anxiety scores that are explained in this case by differences in course experiences. For this one, it's differences in uh, instructional methods. And for this one, it would be differences in uh, determined by the um, interaction. And in this case, you can see that the partial eta square is very small. Then we have our power values, and the power is the probability of uh, making a type 1 error, or the probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. Again, the estimated, mar uh, the estimated marginal means that we checked was I just wanted to get the grand mean so you'd have a reference point to see how all the sums of squares are calculated. And then in terms of our multiple comparisons, the only one that we have is uh, for instructional methods because we have three different groups. And so lecture only is compared to lecture and video, and then lecture, video, and collaboration. And we see that when there is a star by the mean difference, so lecture minus lecture and video, those two means, uh, this result is significant. And so the mean for lecture only, that statistical anxiety mean is significantly higher than for uh, lecture and video. So if we go back up here and look at lecture only and video, this difference, four point difference is significant. Then we have lecture only, lecture, video and collaboration. Again, the difference between the statistical anxiety mean for lecture only and the difference between the um, uh, statistical anxiety mean for lecture, video, and collaboration is 3.5. And again, this mean is significant. So this post hoc test makes all possible comparisons. Now again, we know that the main effect of course experience is significant. 
but we don't do a post hoc test because there's only two means. So if we go up here and we look at the statistical anxiety for no prior course versus prior course, then this two point difference is significant, saying that those who have not taken a prior course have significantly higher statistical anxiety than those who have not taken a prior course. Uh, the homogeneous subtests simply uh, are saying that lecture and video, lecture and video, and lecture video and collaboration, those uh, methods, the students do not exhibit significant differences in statistical anxiety. However, we can see that with lecture only, this mean. 15.5 is significantly higher than these two means. And then we also see that um, the line showing the differences or comparing no course, no prior course, to prior course across the three instructional methods. And you can see that um, they differ at uh, each level. Please let me know if you have questions. Thank you.